Hi, I'm Andy Gray, CEO and co-founder of Cortical, and I'm really excited to introduce you to our new tool for data scientists, Cortical Data Prep. So what exactly is this tool solving? Well, I saw this tweet from Ben Hamner, CTO of Kaggle, a couple of days ago, and uh, what it says is that data science is 1% writing code and 90% figuring out what's going on with data. And this is a, a sentiment we see echoed a lot. Yet, almost all tools to help with data prep are making that 1% of code writing no code. And that's not really something that data scientists struggle with to begin with. What we're doing is automating the grunt work of understanding your data, that 90% block, and then taking that to the next level. So let's dive right in with the favorite data science 101 data set, the Titanic. For those that don't know, the goal of this data set is to predict who might have survived from the Titanic ticket data. Let's jump in. Okay, so first thing first, we need to just upload the data set. So I'm just gonna find this part of my computer. So now once that's uploaded, we're gonna be able to see this ticket data that we just talked about. And um, yeah, so here we can see we've got this passenger ID column, survived, uh, what's the, the, the class of the ticket, what's the name of the person on the ticket, uh, you know, what gender were they, uh, what age were they, you know, did they have any siblings or spouses, parents and children, ticket, fare, cabin, where did they embark from, and all this sort of stuff. So, this would be sort of quite typical when you get a data science problem and you are faced with a bunch of data and you don't necessarily know what you gotta do. So here we know that we're trying to predict if someone survived or not. So we can select that, click save, and then we're gonna go through and explore the data. So the first thing that we can see is a bit of a summary of our data. So here we've got the number of columns, the number of rows, the types of different columns we have. So we can see we've got four numeric, six categorical, and two text. So now we kind of come down to the data completeness. So what this is showing us is that the data set only has 891 rows and that we get better results if we were able to add more data. Now, we can't go back in time and add more people to the Titanic, but yeah, what we can do is if we're in, you know, if we're doing something with customer churn or something like that, often there'll be a database that we can go back to, get a few more records in, maybe pump that up a bit, and then we'll get better machine learning results. The other thing that this is showing us is it's showing us when there's some data missing from some of these columns. So he, here we can see we're missing 20% of this age data. And that's actually quite typical when you're looking at demographics. So we find that like of all of the data the sets that we get, when, when you've got demographic data, that's often the stuff that's filled in worst. And often that's where people are trying to derive the most insight into their customers or, or with their predictions or doing that segmentation. So, you know, it's really handy if you've got a tool like this where you can jump in, see straight away what data is missing, and then get back to your client or get back to your boss and say, hey, we need to figure out how we solve this problem or how we work around this. Over here, we can see that basically 80% of the cabins are missing. So, you know, that's showing you something there too. And the color coding we're seeing here is that sort of the green is saying there's a nice mix of values and where it's fading towards red, that's saying, yeah, maybe a single value dominates, so maybe it won't be quite as good for machine learning. But that's not always a bad thing. It's just sort of letting you know that there's something to look at, basically. So when we come down to these column insights now, so what's going on here is it's basically using, you know, uh, machine learning to dive in and try to figure out um, what are the insights that we can present back to the people. So here we can see it's actually telling us, you know, that we could actually remove columns from our data. So it's actually figuring out, hey, you know, some of these columns aren't actually adding any value. This is, you know, not such a big deal for a small data set like the Titanic, but if you're dealing with thousands of columns, this could save you huge amounts of time. We're also looking at basically, you know, and again, not such a big deal in a small data set like this, but basically it's already got the feature importance. So it builds up this big ensemble of, of, of machine learning models to try to figure out all the different insights, like it would have been able to tell us if there was any leaking variables and how to deal with all these sort of other complexities, high levels of correlation, all that sort of stuff. Um, but here we can see that, that, you know, with sex is the most important variable, so women and children first, hardly surprising. Um, and then we see name. Now name might be you know, surprising to some people as being quite an informative feature. Um, but if we look at 
sex. And again, if you've got a really large data set, then you know, being able to see the key variables that are likely to be most important first is a huge, huge time saver. So we're jumping in here and we're able to see, yep, yeah, we've got two, two genders, not surprising, but always good, good when your data lines up with expectations. Um, and then when we look at this versus the target, we can see, yep, yeah, so, so uh, you know, in terms of not surviving, more men didn't survive, more women did survive. Um, so this is pretty much in line with what we expect to see. And then basically, so name. So again, like we say, you might be curious to see how does name factor in into predicting if someone's going to live or not. And um, so what we can see here is that the most frequent word is Mr. Uh, somebody in a 14 word name. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I don't know. But uh, I, I, yeah, that was, they might have an interesting password, I guess. Um, so here we can see sort of Mr., Miss, Mrs., apparently William and John were popular names too. Um, and when we look in the data, so actually a cool thing here is that this isn't just looking at the most frequent words. So if we had, you know, our words like the and of, it wouldn't just be sort of giving us those. It looks for the most important words in the data and then it tries to show us the distinctions between those words. So here we can see that actually, you know, the, what we're pulling out of this is actually whether they're married or not. Uh, and the gender is actually really informative. So here we see that Mrs. is more likely to survive than Miss. So married women did better than unmarried women. So I don't know, that might've been a bit of a surprise. Maybe not. Uh, and then we basically got Mr. Well, Mr. didn't do too good, you know? So, so that's, uh, you know, uh, quite an interesting little insight. And, um, you know, if we're looking at fair, so again, sort of fair might be one where, you know, it, yeah, we kind of see this distribution. It's not that surprising. Basically, a lot of people, well, a lot of people paid very, very little for their tickets. Or some people paid zero, you know, and then we can see that sort of the mean was, was about 32. Uh, but that's driven by massive outliers up here. So there's some, some big outliers and then basically sort of like quite a, um, quite a, a, a sort of a sharp uh, drop, essentially. Um, so when we look at this data, so this is a bit interesting. So now when we look at the people who didn't survive, we can see that the blue bars, you know, we're, they, there's a, a lot more of them. They're higher than the pink bars for the lower end of the data. And then we can also see that the pink bars are higher on the, the higher end of the data. So this is probably unsurprising, but it's basically if you paid more money, you were more likely to survive. Um, so that's quite cool. And then I think sort of cabin is a bit interesting. So, you know, this is the one where we had 80% missing data. So well, actually we can see sort of 77% of the values are NAM. Um, but you see it's actually ranked reasonably high. And I think sort of when we look in at the data and uh, we have to zoom in here and we can zoom in again. But what we can see here is that actually the, the charts for these values, there's quite a lot of pink in these charts. So we're basically seeing that a lot of people have this one, so a lot of people survived. And then when we sort of zoom out, we can see that not many people who didn't have a cabin survived. So therefore, that what it's actually picked out of this is that people with a cabin survived, which again is sort of linking back to how much money they paid for their tickets, probably being on nicer decks that have better access to lifeboats and things like that. So it's all sort of playing into this sort of stuff that we can, you know, that we can understand. Um, and then basically, when we look at this, it's got passenger ID. So obviously, you know, passenger ID is. Uh, is, is basically this sort of you know uniform distribution. It's basically telling us uniform distribution, not very informative, it's just an ID for the, the ticket data. So basically it's saying, look, just ignore that. Um, and then when we come down to the target variable insight, so this is really interesting. Obviously you wanna see uh, your columns, see, you know, yep, we can see that sort of 62% of people didn't survive, only 38% only did survive. Um, and it's already picked out that this is a binary classification problem. You know, and so uh, it's going to predict that each row is zero or one. And we can see that if we just predict people would die, then we would find that, that we would get to 62% accuracy. So obviously that's your baseline accuracy, and then you're going to try to build off that. And then we're recommending the area under the curve metric. Uh, but we've got a lot more detail for you to dive into if you want to kind of get down into all the reasons why you might pick different uh, types of, of uh, evaluation metrics. So. When we're looking over here, we can see that we're saying that actually we can do a reasonable level jo uh, job of predicting the two classes. So we can predict if someone survived or if they didn't survive. Now, this might seem um, a bit strange to see, but what we often find is that when people are looking at data, especially if there's a large number of different classes that can be predicted, 
that some of the classes won't be able to be predicted very well, and maybe there's actually a very small amount of data associated with those classes. So by having this up front, and then we've got the, the warnings that can let you know that you don't have enough data to predict these things well, and that can help you out to sort of solve some of those data issues before you get too deep stuck into a project. So then we've got the action summary, and in this case it's really simple, it's just gonna remove that passenger ID, but in more complex cases it will be, you know, getting you to same case um, categorical variables and things like that. So that was a whirlwind tour of Coracle Data Prep. The key things I want you to take away are, one, this tool automates a lot of the legwork of understanding your data. Two, we only showed you a fraction of the functionality. It can automatically detect leaking columns, work with regression, and a lot more. And three, we're really committed to making the best data prep assistant on the market, so it's gonna keep on getting better. If you wanna get on the beta program while it's free, to try it out or to get involved in providing feedback to help us make the best tool out there, click on the link in the description. Some of you might not have much of a frame of reference, so I'm gonna do a quick run through of the top rated Kaggle exploratory data analysis for Titanic. So here we go. Right, you can see he's got about 15,000 views, so this is pretty popular. And he starts out by displaying that head of the data, just like you saw that first thing that splashes up in the platform. And uh, then he starts looking for, uh, yeah, so basically what are the data types? So that's, so again, we sort of call that out. Uh, then he's looking for the missing values. Again, uh, then he's looking for the number of unique values. Um, he's basically trying to find the most frequent variables, good analysis. Um, then he's doing the univariate analysis. So this is again where he's plotting those distributions or those different charts. He's already cut down on the number of things that he's looking at. So obviously he's sort of, you know, decided from what he's seen, missing values and that sort of stuff that he, he, he thinks he's, he's got some safe bets. And then he does his bivariate analysis. And this is where he's looking at those variables versus the target to try to see uh, you know, which ones are leading what, you know, what, what, what variables are, are leading to what sort of uh, insights. So he's doing his correlations. So again, basically, if you don't have the feature importances, then you could use correlations to try to figure out what's important. But obviously, if you're just doing correlations, you're going to miss out on things like how, you know, NLP is impacting your, uh, your target or basically how categoricals are impacting your target as well. So uh, that's something to look out for. Um, and actually one of the things he does pull out is he looks at the name and he's looking at the value counts within the name so he does spot sort of Mr, Miss, Mrs, uh, Master that these sort of are all quite interesting values so that's good. Um, then we go down here and he starts basically creating some models. And uh, yeah, at the end here he's basically saying ta-da, but unfortunately he has um, done a prediction on his training set don't do this. Uh, but besides that, I think one of the interesting things is you can see that there's quite a lot of work that went into this. And uh, you know, if he'd been using the platform, he would have uh, been able to you know save himself a lot of time. Also, the fact that you know he missed out on the cabin because you know he didn't get that unbiased view of the data. So having that unbiased sort of you know part partner to you while you're working it, it is really useful. So hopefully that's got you fired up to try it out. If you do anything cool with the platform, be sure to tag us at Cortical AI on Twitter so we can check it out. Uh, once again, the link for the free beta is in the description. This is a limited free beta, so be sure to sign up while there's spaces. Once it goes live, this will be a paid tool. All right, thanks for your time, later.